All right, last night, Monday night, the Vancouver Canucks beat the Ottawa Senators 3-2 to in overtime. We're going to break down the film. All right, our first play comes just four minutes in, and it is a good chance for the Ottawa Senators here. Hey, look, the like button sponsored uh, the Ottawa Senators boards there, so make sure you hit that. Um, as we go here, um, the Sens are coming up the ice on a bit of a three-on-two, right? So this, pack, this puck gets played up, and now this is sort of your, your, your prototypical three-on-two, right? You got one, two three on one two three on two right so ottawa's in on the attack so kachuk gets the puck and he's moving in and what this does is you know the the defensemen have to keep track of him so his play is he's going to tap the puck along the blue line to this guy who's coming in to pick the puck up and what he'll then do is as this guy comes in and fills this lane he's going to drive to the net and we'll actually see that here if we go forward just a little bit so he passes that puck over and then he goes on a b line and what that does is it creates depth, right? Because if they're in a line, you know, if they're like one, two, three in a line here, then this guy is completely useless because Kachuk's in the way of this pass. So he goes in to make depth, and that way this gives Norris two options. He can snap it across, or he can try to finesse it through or take a shot and hope Kachuk gets the rebound. A couple of options there. What this also does is it makes one of these two D-men have to focus on this guy, right? And since he's going down the middle, it might cause some confusion. So really the idea is you got three guys, one of them's going to get open. So the puck gets played over to Norris. He looks up and now look at this. He's looking, I'm going to pass across. And everyone thinks, all right, this guy, this guy's getting the pass. So Edler sort of tries to close this gap. Uh, this guy's about to step into this lane. Um, but what happens is out of nowhere, we see another stick come in. Thomas Shabbat comes in and basically picks this pass off. Now, this guy thinks the puck's going here. He thinks it's going to this guy. So since Shabbat comes and basically picks this off, he now has this entire middle of the ice wide open as this defenseman pinched this way. Kachuk went this way. Uh, Edler's on Norris here. So look at this. Just full open ice to skate into. Uh, Miller tries to get a stick on him there. A good shot from Shabbat, but Demko, again, squared the shot like he has been the last six games or so really well and he's able to make the stop, but a good chance for Ottawa here early on. All right, our next play is another good chance from Ottawa since they were the dominant team in the first period here. Uh, so we're about four and a half minutes in, 15, 18 to go in the first period, and they're just breaking out of their own zone. And I want you to watch Quinn Hughes here. Uh, Quinn Hughes is the basically the first D-man back, right? Because we have one, two, three forwards here. So we have one D-man, and then there's another D-man back there. But this guy's gonna get past him. This guy's trying to get past Hughes and Hughes bites a little bit. So um, I think this is Stutzla, is that right? Yeah, Stutzla just speeds. He's like, right, I'm just going. Uh, and Hughes wants to block this pass from getting through. But that speed from Stutzla and these guys not able to clog this lane up, if this puck gets through, he's got way more speed. Hughes is facing this way. So Stutzla's off to the races. This puck does get through, really good pass. And now just like that, it's a two on one, right? One, two on one both coming in this way. And even if Hughes does catch up, it's still a three on two because they have this guy trailing. So this is a really prime chance for Ottawa here to start. All right, so Stutzla comes in down the wing. He's got this passing lane. Uh, he can go either rip it across and hope for a one-timer, um, but this guy might be able to get a stick in the way. And Hughes is also trying to get back and block this lane up. So his best options are really to go in for a shot uh, or probably drop it back to Tierney here might be a good option as well. Um, so what happens is if we go forward here a little bit, uh, he fakes the shot. Stutzla makes it look like he's going to shoot, um, which basically makes this guy go down to protect the pass or the shot kind of in the middle. And then he does this beautiful move inside out, which opens up this lane. His play is get the puck from here to here, and then you can snap it across. And then this guy can come in on the back door and he's got a wide open net on this side. But Travis Hamonick does a really good job, gets the skate out here able to kick this now it is dangerous because if Demko over commits and he slides this way for the pass then this is just going to basically fly into this side of the net as Demko moves but Demko and I went over this in our last film analysis um, is very good at keeping that chest to the puck at all times so even as this pass goes across he's able to track it basically in sync with the puck the whole way so if something like this does happen he's able to quickly stop and this puck is still going at his chest. So he doesn't overcommit. He's able to make the stop. And again, we're still tied at zero. 
All right, the Vancouver Canucks first goal in this game comes about halfway through the first period, and I really like this face-off play from them here. So we got Brandon Sutter taking the draw. We're going to see um, this guy. Is this Michaelis? No, Michaelis is here. This is Howerluck. Uh, Howerluck's going to come in to support, and then so is Michaelis. So what we'll see here, uh, Sutter sort of half wins this draw as it finally comes through. The puck ends up just coming out to here, right? So what that's going to do is we have Howerluck getting in first ahead of this guy, right? So he's winning this race and he's going to get to this puck first. And his goal, slap it back to Jordy Ben. Just a quick feed uh, and that opens the ice up, right? Look at all this room up here right off the face off, right? So they have a ton of room to start making some plays. Uh, on his attempt to do this, it hits a stick and it pops up. But since Michaelis also went across, this puck ends up falling right to him and he's able to play it back to Jordy Ben. So Jordy Ben ends up taking a shot here and everyone sort of crashes the net. Uh, this shot, we can see it hits, the puck's right here, it hit Wolainen uh, and Howerluck battling here. So Decord is sort of stuck here, right? He's just watching the puck, hoping it doesn't get uh, a quick shot on him. Uh, so this puck lands, we see Brandon Sutter come in uh, right here down at the bottom and he gets his stick on it and he's going to take a quick shot. And this is actually a really good shot. He actually tries to go far post and Decord's able to get his toe on it. So a really good kick save, right? He gets the kick on it. The problem is with the way that his pad is angled, right? This angle here in his pad is that this gets kicked instead of going like this, it sort of hits this and goes right out in front. Howerluck is looking, he's ready. His stick's on the ice, which is always key when you're in a battle in front of the net. Stick on the ice and he's able to just quickly smack it. Decord is not able to get the stick down in time. It goes through and it's in and it's one nothing. All right, our next play here is a bit of a gaffe by the Canucks and uh, a bit on the end of JT Miller and Tyler Myers, a bit of a miscommunication here. Uh, so about five minutes to go in the first period, Edler's behind the net. Pretty normal play, has a guy pressuring him, curls away from him. Myers skates into this open space here. Uh, Edler saw him sort of come around here, right here, just a quick little pass. He knows no one else is around, right? Next threats are here, here, way down here. It's fine to make a quick little tap up the middle to your guy so he can skate up and make a uh, breakout pass. However, JT Miller uh, looks like he was ready to receive it as well, which is fine, you know. Uh, and Myers has to reach out for this pass. So Miller, seeing that Myers sort of bobbles it here, right? But again, the puck is mostly stopped right here. Myers is going to skate onto it. This guy is not a, a big threat, really. Myers can at least get it and fire it out somewhere, right? Get it out of there. It's fine. But Miller panics. And right as Myers is about to get it, Miller smacks his stick, and that causes the puck to just drift right over to Brady Kachuk, basically in the slot. Uh, he skates over uh, so much time and space, he gets a good shot off and rings it right off the crossbar. Uh, a really lucky break for the Canucks here. All right, the Canucks' second goal here in the first period. Uh, sort of a harmless battle on the boards here. People are battling for the puck. Howlett comes in, White comes in. Everyone's doing stuff. Uh, Pearson is in the high slot here, uh, so he's hoping that this puck ends up on the stick of Horvat or Howerluck and they're able to make a quick pass and Pearson can get a shot off. Uh, Dadunov sort of realizes this, so he sort of comes over to, uh, just to sort of keep watch. And what Pearson does, I love this, he peels away. He's like, alright, I'm gonna go maybe take a line change, right? Basically, tell this guy, tell this guy, I'm not a threat, I'm just leaving. But what he does is he peels back and then he immediately takes a turn. We see uh, Pearson, he'll come in on the side here. It's kind of tough to see because of the, uh, the, the way this works. But he comes back and then he'll go off screen and he ends up coming right back here. So the camera angle changes. We end up seeing behind the net. And what happened was Colin White got this puck and he just played it out. Um... Now, if you watch the video with sound, you can hear someone yell, White! Now, was that Tanner Pearson? I mean, he did put it right on Pearson's tape. Pearson makes a quick shot, uh, beats Decord right here, pucks here. That's a goal. And the Canucks are up 2-0. Uh, if Pearson did call Colin White's name, and I think he denied it after, but, I mean, I would say, oh yeah, totally did that on purpose. Uh, you love to see it. A smart goal, a smart play from Tanner Pearson. All right, Senators on the power play about a minute into the second period. Uh, pretty normal zone entry here. Dadunov gains the blue line, and uh, we can see the entire... I mean, we got three Sens sort of bunched up here, three Canucks D bunched up here, and I really like what Dadunov does here, right? 
he's going to skate this way and he's going to drop it back. And again, you create depth, right? You give everyone options, you spread out and you make the defense move as well. So Dinov is going to drop it here and he's going to burn. He's going to burn all the way to this far face off top, which might be covered by my face. But um, so he leaves for Kachuk and that draws this guy over to worry about Kachuk. And Stutzlo is just here as a second option. This is basically if Kachuk feels pressure, he can just drop it back to Stutzla while Dadnov burns around. So that's exactly what happens. Um, Tuchuk sees that, gets pressured, ends up getting poke checked, and Stutzla is just there uh, to pick this puck up. So Stutzla reaches, pulls it back. See the blue line here? Stays on the blue line. He is on side. Linesman is on it. He sees it. It's a good play. And he holds the line. And since he looks like he's going this way, it baits JT Miller and the seas sort of open up here for Stutzla. Because if he can get through this gap, he's got this entire, he's got the whole zone to skate into. So makes his move inside out. And now look at this. We are four on two. The two Canucks penalty killers, the two forwards are caught up here. There's two defensemen left. You've got one guy in front of the net. You've got Batherson coming in to help. you got Kachuk getting open. Dadnov's going to go over here. So Stutzla, instead of passing to Batherson, or he does pass to Batherson, sorry, he makes his quick pass over to Batherson because, again, he has the most space, and that gives him options, right? You have this defenseman coming over to pressure. Tyler Myers is reaching out with the stick, so he's sort of out of the play. Kachuk sees that Myers is reaching out and knows, okay, I have this entire open ice to skate into, so he's going to skate to here, and Batherson, head up. He knows, I've got a guy here, I've got a guy here, so he takes this pass quickly, fakes shot which makes Edler go down for the block so now he's taken out of the play and this puck comes right through Myers is scrambling he can't get there in time and Kachuk he's all alone with this entire net open and the puck gets to him and look at Demko sprawling and all he's trying to do is get something there right he knows look Kachuk's got this whole net open I can't get my body in front of it I'm just gonna get my pad down and take this away and Kachuk's just not able to get enough of it. Demko with a beautiful pad save. Just give yourself a chance to make the save, and that's exactly what he does. All right, here's the Sens' first goal where they get on the board, and this starts with a pretty innocent play. Nate Schmidt in his own zone in the corner, and he's just trying to play it around the boards, right? Just get it out uh, of the zone. Uh, he's got Pearson up there, uh, and Artem Zub is trying to hold the line. So as we see him play this around the boards, and this is what I want you to watch. It's kind of blurry, but you can kind of see what's going on. We have Artem Zub right here. He's got his hand up to block this puck, and Tanner Pearson needs to try to check him. But what Pearson does instead is he does the classic beer league move of thinking, I can get a breakaway. So instead of going to here and getting in Zub's way, he goes around and hopes that Zub misses, and then he can just burn up ice. So you'll see Pearson skate right past him. Zub knocks his puck down. We see it's here, it's going this way, and now Zub can skate onto this puck and now we have Pearson here we have Vertanen here blown the zone and Ottawa has an advantage here this puck gets played across they've got a man uh, it's Bathurst or Stutzla he puts it off the post um, and then Norris ends up swatting it down a knuckler that gets past Demko again this all starts just from a failed clearance uh, Tanner Pearson really should be playing the body there right uh, Zub is going up and all the best he can do is swat this puck down but if Pearson skates by him then he's got he's just got daylight. So I want Pearson to either step into Zub or stop and at least prevent Zub from having an open chance at getting to the net. This leads to a goal and now it's a one goal game. All right, another really bad giveaway from the Canucks here in their own zone. Uh, pretty normal battle. Hamnick tries to play it up the boards. Norris takes it. They're in a good battle. Uh, this puck ends up coming free to Michaelis in the corner, right? So here's the situation we're in. Michaelis has the puck in the corner on his stick there. He's got a couple options. Uh, his best one is just play it up to Sutter because this guy's tied up by Hamannick, so he's kind of out of the play. This guy won't get there soon. This guy won't get there soon. So we can go quick to Sutter, up to Howerluck, and break out of the zone. Um, and everything's everything's hunky-dory. Everything's happy. Uh, so Michaelis does that, plays it to Sutter. What's Sutter's best option here? It's Jace Howerluck, and it's not close, right? Uh, we can see all five of the Canucks are on our screen here. One, two, three, four, five. So he's really got two options. He can turn and then do like a backhand pass back to Michaelis in the corner and start a fresh breakout. He could, worst case, 
dump it behind his own net and let Hughes go get it. Or he can just pass it to Jace Howerluck, who might have a D-man pressure him, but he can probably get it off the boards and out, right? So pretty normal, pretty normal breakout. Instead, what he does, he passes it to Quinn Hughes. He doesn't just pass it to Quinn Hughes. He passes it backhand, a little drop pass to Hughes. But Kachuk is right here, and he's skating right here. <laughs> so Sutter, drop pass, literally onto the tape of Kachuk, who's right here. And look at this. He's got a man right in the slot. Stick, you know, he's, he's on his forehand, and he's ready to take a shot. Now, Kachuk makes a little backhand feed to Stutzla coming this way. Not a good pass. If he had passed it right here and Stutzla could have taken it on the forehand and taken a quick shot yeah, at this side of the net. Uh, but instead, Stutzla has to sort of get control, pulls it, gets a really good toe drag and a shot off. Demko fights it off. But man, Sutter, what are you doing here? We're still at 2-1 halfway through the second. All right, in the third period, the best early chance does come from the Canucks. And they're just moving up ice. Hoaglander plays it over. Uh, to Brock Besser, and they're skating into the zone. Pretty normal. It's a three-on-three, -three, right? Uh, he's going to go this way. He's going to go this way, and Hoaglander's going to trail, right? What, you, you, what you're trying to do is you're just trying to make a triangle, right? And that gives you an option to play it across. It gives you an option to drop it back, and then he can play it across. The triangle is always the best play when you're going in with three guys. So Besser comes in, gets pressured by Shabbat here, so he drops it back to Hoaglander, right? He's got an option there. Hoaglander can skate onto the puck. So as this puck comes back, what we see is a crucial mistake from Zub, right? What we should have here is, even though Stutzel's right close to Horvat, in this triangle, you have the two D-men, and they should also be making a triangle, right? We should have a triangle here from Ottawa, which means Stutzel needs to go here and pick up Niels Hoaglander, and that's what he does. Zub, though, also picks up Niels Hoaglander. So what happens is we have this guy go here, this guy go here, and Bo Horvat can just get in behind. So this drop pass comes, to Hoaglander, and look at this. Zub skates this way. Stutzla is about to go this way. Now he realizes, uh-oh, my D-man's gone. I gotta turn this way. Uh, and then look at this. Niels Hoaglander, inside out, beats Zub. Zub is just done. He's done over here. And Hoaglander, uh, Stutzla does a good job filling this passing lane, though. That's a really good play. Fills this passing lane, basically takes the Horvat play out. But look at Niels Hoaglander here. Niels Hoaglander, um, again, looks like he's going to go backhand and make an uh, Antoine Roussel-esque pass across on the backhand, but instead he cuts back, forcing Stutzla to stop this way, and he can go to here and he can snap a quick pass over, over to Horvat. Now, the issue here is Horvat can't get a lot on it. Decord makes a great save, but it's a pretty, no, it's not a super tough save. Obviously, you got to stretch across, uh, but Horvat doesn't get a lot on this puck. What I would like to see from Niels Hoaglander here is I'd like to see him make this move, pull it to the forehand, and I want to see him basically shoot the puck right here, just wide. I want him to just take a rocket of a shot, just a quick snapshot right there, so that Horvat can tip it. Uh, so it's not a pass. I want it to be a shot that he can then, he can hit his stick and he can deflect it and at least get it up because it has more power on it, or at least it'll get there quicker. Uh, I'd like to see Hoaglander get a little more power, a little more oomph on that play, but still a really nice passing play from Hoaglander. Just doesn't work out. All right, last couple of minutes of the game here in the third period. Uh, Sens need a goal down by one. They're moving up ice and they pull the goalie. Uh, pretty standard dump and chase from Kachuk. Just get the puck in deep. Let your goalie get to the bench. Get your six guys on there. You can apply pressure in the zone and try to get this puck back. So puck gets dumped in. Demko goes out to play it. Pretty standard play. Now, the, the camera angle cuts to Decord going to the bench, which kind of sucks. But Demko ends up ringing the puck around the boards, which we see here. Demko has put it around the boards right here to Alex Edler. Now, the issue is that Alex Edler sort of fumbles this puck. Um, can't handle it. Uh, and then the Sens end up getting possession. So we're going to cut to a different camera angle. So here's the other camera angle. Demko just put it around here to Edler. He sort of fumbled it. And now the Sens are getting possession on this wall here. Uh, so, sort of a mess here, but now you can see, uh, net's empty up here and they got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I want you to realize where all of the Canucks defenders are. All five are over here on this side of the ice, which means this side of the ice, if the Sens can just get it over here, you've got Colin White coming off the bench and he has so much daylight, right? If that puck gets through, he's by himself. So Kachuk does a really good job, wins this battle against 
his man. And look at this. Hamannick's still focusing sort of on Stutzla. He's losing his position. Everyone's looking. Look at, all, look at all the Canucks' eyes. This way. This way. This way. This way. Then there's one on the ice. Everyone's looking this way. No one sees Colin White coming in off the bench. And uh, Travis Hamannick needs to pick this guy up. Kachuk gets the puck. Quickly plays it up. We see Hamannick realize, okay, I got to get over here. He just doesn't get there in time. A quick pass, a quick shot, and Colin White beats Thatcher Demko. And we're tied at two going to overtime. For the Canucks overtime winner, we're going to use this camera angle because it does show the whole ice the best. Um, basically, we have Quinn Hughes back here. Uh, and since it's overtime, you get the long change, right? It used to be that overtime was the same orientation as the third period, but teams switch sides in overtime now, which means the Canucks bench is here, basically in Ottawa's zone, which means if they have possession, which possession is everything in overtime, they can change and Ottawa can't because they can't get to here, right? So Hughes pulls it back and waits. And now we see Pearson go to the bench. Someone else goes to the bench. And uh, JT Miller, Brock Besser jump on to the ice. We see Pearson get off. And now what happens is if we go back just a little bit, see Shabbat sort of, sort of went up to pressure, but he's like, okay, you know what? I have a chance. I'm just going to get to the bench quickly. What that does is it leaves two forwards on the ice for the Sens. Now, one of them is up here on Hughes, which means these two guys coming off the bench, if the puck gets up to him, it's a two on one on a forward. So they make the quick play. Miller's calling for it, right? He taps the stick. He's ready. And look at this. Shabbat's gone to the bench. So there's no one here. There's only two guys on the ice for Ottawa. And, they ha and this guy's here. So if this puck is going to fly into Miller and him and Besser can come in two on one. However, this puck comes into Miller and Kachuk gets greedy. He goes for Miller. His thought process here most definitely is I can just surprise Miller, get to him quickly, and I can poke it this way. And now this guy can turn and we have a breakaway, right? That's probably what Kachuk is thinking, but it doesn't work. JT Miller just makes a quick move to this side, pulls it to this side, and now Kachuk is beat, right? Look at where their skates are. He's right at the line. Uh, he's basically right at the line too. He's done. Miller turns on the Jets, just even leaves Brock Besser in his wake. Uh, and Miller just comes in all alone. Forehand, backhand, back and forehand, puts it upstairs on Joey Decord. Canucks win 3-2 in overtime. JT Miller with the winner. If you enjoyed this film analysis, hit the like button, the subscribe button. We're super close to 1,000 still. Hit that button. Um, anyways, that's all I really got for you guys tonight. I probably won't be doing a post-game recap for tomorrow's game against the Senators. Uh, it'll be the first one I miss, but I, uh, I do have a tee time. So I'm going to go golfing for the first time of the season. Um, and I, I can't miss that. So uh, anyways, hope you guys have a good one. Uh, I will see you probably all on Thursday with a film analysis of Wednesday's game. So we'll still have that on Thursday. Anyways, talk to you later.